1990. The problem of traveling to the moon has been solved for many years. Space stations have been built there, and authorized personnel come and go as they wish. But the moon is a dead world. And the great question about space still remains. Does life exist on another planet? To seek an answer to this question, the major powers of the world have been actively preparing at the International Institute of Space Technology to explore the planets Venus and Mars. for lunch. Yes. Oh, great, because I'm starved. I just finished a high G session in the Central. How do you feel? Not bad, considering. How's the music of the spheres today? Hmm? We've been picking up these signals now for three days. Dr. Faraday thinks they're from a planet within our galaxy, but beyond our solar system. What, well, does he think it might be a form of communication? Well, they're different from anything we've picked up before. They're working on some tapes that I've made now, trying to see if they can decipher it. Bill, I'm leaving the recorder on automatic. Can you keep an eye on it for me? Right. There must be some, a message of some kind. And just think, if it is, it will be our first contact with intelligent beings from another planet.
You certainly were hungry. That's the one bad thing about space trips, no banana splits. No matter what they say about that exobiologic food, it tastes terrible. It's all relative. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Mind sharing your table with a couple of starving astronauts? Hi, Tony. Hi, Paul. Sit down. Have a seat, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Alan was just complaining about the exobiologic food. You'd better get used to it. That's all you're going to get once you're on the way to Mars. It is Mars you're scheduled for, isn't it? Yeah, if and when. What's the latest scuttlebutt there, Tony, baby? I only know what Matahara here tells me. And she gets to stay from the horse's mouth. You mean Dr. Faraday? Well, I do hear a remark now and then. They seem to be making some excellent progress on that new radiation shield. Attention. As a matter of fact... Attention, all personnel. All personnel. Assemble immediately in Area 1 for important announcement. Attention, all personnel. That means us. Who am I going to do this? So you'll area have codes to. Go at once to Come on. Area 1 for important announcement. All you think this means we're flying, Alan? We could be there more ready for Mars than we think, huh, Alan? I hope so. Do you think you're getting married in a month? Hmm. Commander Brockman, what's happened? No idea. It must be pretty important, though. That's for sure, sir. My friends and fellow workers, in the great, great adventure, adventure of space, I have, have the most important news to announce since our first successful landing on the moon 20, 20 years, years ago. ago. As many of you know, for several weeks now, we have been receiving organized signals from a far galaxy. This morning, our code experts finally deciphered the message these signals contain. It's, it's a most extraordinary document. It's very long. I'm, I'm not, not going to read it to you, but uh, I would like you to have the gist of it. It, it informs, informs us that they are dispatching a spaceship to bring their ambassador to our planet Earth. They believe our atmospheric conditions will support their form of life, which apparently is similar to our own. The timing of their blast off should be just about now. But I wanted you here at Space Institute to be the first to know. I'm sure the entire world will await the arrival of this spaceship with the keenest anticipation. Thank you. From the Space Institute, fixing position and probable time of approach of the space vehicle, bringing for the first time in our world's known history to our planet aliens who are our first visitors from a distant galaxy. Meanwhile, at 5.18 this morning, the California Satellite Observatory reported that an unknown object has crossed the orbit of the moon and is rapidly approaching Earth. Scientists unanimously agree that this is not the expected space vehicle itself, but is a mechanical device 
sent ahead by them for reasons unknown at the present time. report ready? They have sent us a video log that contains a photographic record of the alien ship's entire flight. You ready? Yes, doctor. It's in perfect working order. All right, let's see it. standing on Mars. And this is their SOS. We are obviously in touch with beings who have a very highly evolved technology. Do you think their ship was destroyed, Doctor? No, I don't. I think there's an excellent chance that there may be survivors. But we haven't received any more signals now for three days. Well, that may mean merely damaged equipment. What I'm interested in is the possibility that these extraordinary creatures who have sent us this video log of their disaster may, at this instant, be waiting for us to rescue them. Dr. Well, Dr. Faraday, Faraday, we... Attention, Dr. Faraday, please report to your office immediately. They can't wait to hear what it's about. I intend to schedule a, a press conference for 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. The world wants to know what has happened, and I shall tell them. But the real question remains to be answered. What are we going to do about it? And so it appears that these beings from another world have called for our help. <coughs> the situation it may, it may not, not be exactly, exactly as we would have wished, wished. but now, now that the doors, doors have realistically opened, opened to close, close the, gap the gap between worlds, I, I feel that we are obliged to make every effort to give them our help. help. It is true, of course, that, that we are fully prepared, prepared to embark the Mars. The spaceship Oceano has, has been designated, designated to attempt the first flight to Mars six, six months from, from now. now. I'm going to urge the heads of state of all countries to, to cooperate, cooperate in, in this endeavor. endeavor. Time to go to Mars, Mars is now, and not, not six, six months, months from now. now. And to do so, we, we must, must get, get those supplies to the moon. moon.
Attention, please. Attention, please. Will the commander of freight rocket RT-12 please report to the central operator? You have a call from Earth. I'm sorry, Doctor. We don't seem to be able to pick up a thing. That equipment must have been destroyed in the crash. Dr. Faraday, may I speak to you for a moment, please? Yes, of course. Since there are no more signals coming through, I'm afraid we'll have to proceed in the dark, as it were. Doctor, I, I just received my orders. Oh, good. Yes, yes. Are you, are you pleased? Of course. But I was hoping that Alan Brenner would be on my flight, and I was wondering... I'm sorry, Laura. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do about it. The balance of personnel for this key flight has been most carefully worked over. We shall undoubtedly send Brenner on the Oceana, too. I see. It's a great honor that's been bestowed on you, Laura. And I don't mind telling you now that I was one of those who recommended you. I appreciate that. Dr. Faraday, Dr. Faraday, please report to the Astrophysical Laboratory immediately. Well, Laura, marvelous adventure lies ahead of you. I envy you. Good luck. Thank you. I just heard the news. And I was just trying to get up enough courage to tell you. Well, we sort of figured it might happen this way. I know. Well, look, I'm not sure I'm going to be on the next ship. I'll make a date right now to see you there. In fact, that took a while. I'll take you dancing on Mars. How about that? Attention, astronaut Laura James. Laura James. Please report to the central conference room for a press and television interview. Hey, you're going to be the most famous girl in America. Now go on, tell them who you are and where you came from. Twenty-seven seconds and counting. Vernier start. Report the ready position. Two over zero minus X-ray one two. All systems green. Delta minus one eight seconds to start. Ready light is on. Count down start. Calling Lunar 7. 
Dr. Faraday speaking. Commander Brockman reporting, sir. How are you doing? Everything according to plan, sir. Astronaut James blacked out during acceleration, but is now revived. All instrument readings, normal. Splendid, Commander. Just keep going. Yes, sir. We intend to, sir. Accounting for the DH factor of drift, we progress 75 million miles toward Mars and are passing through perihelion to the sun. Mars is giving off a red coloring and is becoming more vivid as we approach. It suggests that there is a really deep oxidation of the planet's major substance. How does that sound for the ship's log, sir? Very good. Accurate and uh, rather imaginative. Thank you, sir. Maybe when we get back to Earth, you can have that published. And you'll be known as that famous writer astronaut fellow. Well, I thought of it that way. Oh, it's dinner time. Uh, Commander, aren't you going to eat dinner? No, I'm not very hungry. How about you? You very hungry? I'm starved. Well, good. So am I. Let's go eat. What's that? Something's happened to the instruments. Control the flight room. It's a sunburst. Put on your helmets. I'm switching to uh, emergency controls on group three and group seven. On to maximum protection. All controls are working. Use all power available. major sunburst. We are now trying to enter the orbit of Mars. The sunburst severely damaged exterior instruments. Using emergency instruments only. Very difficult. Laura. Laura. Come here, Luciano. It's not translating. Take it. Here. It'll make you feel better. Oh, I've got, oh, I've got a whole symphony in my ears. It ain't bronze. It'll go soon. Are you feeling better? Oh, I guess our emergency equipment worked okay, huh? We're in orbit now. 
We've got to locate the ship. Uh, Paul, you do the observing. Laura, turn off the ultraviolet protection shield. And oh, contact Luna 7. Let them know we came through safely. I'm going to check the fuel supply. I'm very much concerned about the Oceano's fuel supply. That accident forced them to use more than they could spare. You mean they may have trouble landing? No, but it'll be touch and go on the return trip. We must get the Oceano 2 launched sooner. Lunar 7, calling Lunar 7. This is Oceano. Oceano calling Lunar 7. We read you, Oceano. Over. Laura, this is Faraday speaking. We have good news. We've located the interstellar vehicle. It is in section 18, unit 5. Got it. We are now entering orbit position to land. We will transmit again from Mars. Well, gentlemen, our mystery should be solved. May we speak to you for a moment, Dr. Faraday? Certainly, gentlemen. What's on your mind? Well, we've been trying to figure out what's happened to the other space people. I mean, it seems there must be more than one dead man. But of course there's more than one dead man. The others must have boarded a rescue rocket, which at this very instant is marooned someplace else on Mars. It's the only possible explanation. Then we'd have to send observation satellites, isn't that correct, sir? The only way to find the other ship. Unfortunately, the Oceano 2 isn't ready for blast off yet. Oh, that's what we wanted to talk to you about. The uh, rocket ship Meteor is ready to go. And Tony and I figure we can take the observation satellites on it and get them there immediately. Oh, I, I definitely. The Meteor is much too small a ship for that kind of trip. Your fuel would be all used up. You couldn't even land on Mars. Much less return to Earth. We don't intend to land on Mars. What? Look, Dr. Faraday, let me show you what we mean. All right. After we put the satellites into orbit, we can land on one of the moons of Mars, Phobos. We'll have plenty of fuel for this because the gravity here is so slight. And from Phobos, we can get to Mars in our rescue ship. Trevor! Logical. Possible. But it's too great a risk. The slightest miscalculation would mean complete disaster. Every space flight is risky, Dr. Faraday. No, really, Doctor, this is too important. We have our calculations carefully worked out. I know we can do it. You're either fools or very brave men. I'll see what can be arranged.
meteor. Hello, Oceano. We have arrived in orbit. Congratulations, Tony. Uh, let me speak to your co-pilot. There's someone here who wants to say hello. Alan can't speak now. He's releasing the observation satellites. Let's talk again at, uh, 2230 hours. All right. Oh, Laura, come here. You can see the satellite. Look. Now we'll find him. We'll find him for sure. You better radio the Oceano. I think somebody wants to say hello to you. Calling Laura James. Calling Laura James. Come in, Laura James. That is not the correct contact signal, Astronaut Brenner. It seems to be the correct signal for me, Astronaut James. Alan, where are you? We've landed on Phobos. This is Brockman. How is it there? Well, okay, I guess. We'll inspect it in a moment. That wouldn't be advisable, Alan. We've calculated your timing for landing. You must leave within 32 minutes. Alan, if you don't leave now, you'll have to stay a whole week. Okay, we'll be there within two hours. And remember, we're expecting a very warm welcome. You'll get it. The Martian girls are dying to meet you. You'd better hurry. A strong wind is coming up here. You now have 29 minutes left. Thank you, astronaut James. We'll see you soon. Alan, come here. What's that? I don't know. But I think we'd better find out. news for you. It turns out they landed on Phobos. I don't... Who's they? The astronauts from the other planet. The rescue ship landed here and one of them is alive. We're going to bring her with us. But your rescue ship can only carry two people. I know. Do you have any suggestions? Hey, what? This is something we've got to decide between ourselves, Tony. 
You heard Laura. 17 minutes. 16 now. Well, I know, but... We've got no choice, Tony. The rescue ship can't possibly carry more than two. And this... this being is the whole reason we came here. Okay, I'll stay. There's a decent chance that Oceana 2 will get here in time. No. So you go ahead and take her. No, that wouldn't be fair. Look, we don't have time to argue. If we miss the start, all three of us might die. Okay. Let's flip for it. All right, if it'll make you feel better. I haven't got any coins. All I have is paper moon money. My old American good luck piece. Call it. Ed. Meteor. Meteor, answer, please, Alan. I want to talk to you. It's no use. They had a decision to make, and I'm sure they've made it by now. Put up the radio beacon. Whoever is piloting that ship will need all the help he can get in this storm. I don't think you'll have any real difficulty in finding him. Even off foot, he must be following the beacon in this storm. No. Don't worry about it. We're going to find him. Sir, that's our visitor from another planet. Strange. She seems so human, yet obviously not human at all. I know, it's uncanny. It's like what would happen to us if we'd been in another atmosphere. Does she seem to be all right? Anders just took her pulse. He said that it's beating much stronger than a human's if they were unconscious. So... Paul. What? Who brought her? Yeah. 
Alan. I was so afraid you were going to stay. Are you sure, Commander, that there's not going to be enough fuel? I'm sorry, Alan, there isn't. Enough for what? I wanted to pick up Tony. Laura, contact Luna Seven. I want to talk to Dr. Faraday about this. Yes, sir. female astronaut is with us, Doctor. She's still unconscious, but seems to be in a good condition. We're very thrilled by your success. Congratulations. Then you'll blast off immediately. Yes, Doctor. But we're very concerned about astronaut Barata. He's marooned on Phobos, and we don't have enough fuel to pick him up. What's the status of Oceano 2? Oceano 2 will be ready to blast off this week. It seems to me that if Barata uses his emergency ration sparingly, he ought to be able to hold out very well. Thank you, Doctor. We'll convey that message to him. Godspeed, my friends. We'll see you soon, Doctor. Get me the meteor. Hello, meteor. This is Command Ship Oceano calling. Hello, meteor. This is Command Ship Oceano calling. Answer, please. Tony, this is Alan. Listen, Tony, we have good news for you. Are you listening? Please answer. Media calling spaceship media. This is command ship Oceano calling. Why doesn't he answer? Are you sure you're sending properly, Lord? Yes, sir. I'm sending properly. Well, we'll just have to keep trying until we get him. Hello, media. This is command ship Oceano. Answer, please. Tony, are you there? I have important news for you. This is Meteor. Do you hear me? Tony, we do hear you. Why haven't you answered? I went outside to collect some soil samples. I'm going to set up a little lab here. Keep myself busy for a while. <laughs> well, that's great, Tony. Because, listen, we have good news for you. Oceano 2 blasts off in a week. And Dr. Faraday says he can get to you. Just, just don't eat too much. Thanks, I won't. You're going to be okay, Tony. Yeah. You have a good trip back, you hear? Take good care of your passenger. Yeah, we will. Listen, Tony, we're going to have to blast off right now. So, over and out. Over and out. Of course, with a sunburst. Yes, sir. And, oh, Paul, I think you had a logical choice to take care of our passenger. I uh, thought of suggesting it to uh, Laura, but it seems our visitor doesn't get along very well with her own sex. Yes, sir. Well, I'll, I'll do my best, Commander. You count on me, sir. I'm sure you will. Approximately 11 minutes. D1. Hmm? When you're thirsty, you suck water up like this. Hmm. Now you try. Yeah. It's all right, look, like this. That's very good. Now, how about the eating department? Let's try that, huh? See? Like this. Mmm. It's good. It's not that it tastes so great, but it's so good for you. <laughs> Here, you try Look, like this. Hmm. Here, I'll try it. Hmm. I think we're going to have a little trouble in the eating department, sir. How is she responding to the ship's atmosphere? Is it giving her any trouble? No, she seems to be responding fine, sir. Perhaps she is only accustomed to some sort of liquid nourishment. 
You realize, Paul, that her life pattern may be very different from her own. Mm-hmm. Look at her skin, for instance. It appears to have a high chlorophyll content. She may, in certain respects, be more akin to plant life than animal life as we know it. She may even take in some nourishment from the atmosphere through her skin. Hmm. I keep wondering what she's thinking. Well, Paul, the answers to all these questions science will give us. When we bring her back to Earth where they can do adequate tests. In the meantime, though, there is something I can do that may tell us more. What's that, sir? I want to study a sample of her blood under the microscope. Mm. Laura, syringe ready? Take her arm, Paul. Yes, sir. I'll get another hypo, Commander. No, no, Laura, wait. This is more than some childish fear of the needle. Perhaps she has an extremely low pain threshold. Perhaps. Perhaps what, sir? I don't know. But we mustn't do anything that may affect her health adversely. It's probably the most valuable specimen for scientific research in the history of our planet. To get her back to Earth safely has to be our first consideration. Paul, it's your turn to watch the controls, isn't it? Yes, Commander, it is. We'll uh, discuss her puzzling behavior later on again. You know, it might be a good idea to put us some food for her. Perhaps if she gets very hungry, she'll give it a try. Yes, I'm right here, sir. I have to go mind the controls of this old ship now. I'm leaving you uh, some food here in case you get hungry. Some water. You ought to try to get some sleep. You know, sleep? Hmm? All right. Sleep? Hmm? Okay. I've spent more time with her than the others. And I think that I've noticed something about her that the others haven't noticed yet. She has... Check 
call a passenger. See if she's all right. Yes. Could he have had a heart attack? He seemed perfectly well last night. He was perfectly well. Look. at least. She's a monster. You notice how deep and heavy her breathing is? She's gorged herself with fresh blood. And now she's digesting like a boa constrictor that has swallowed a whole animal. She may remain like this for days. It's fascinating. Fascinating. It's horrible. You ought to destroy her right now. No, no, Ellen, she's much too precious for that. Besides, how can we expect her to conform to our ideas of proper behavior? She's not necessarily aware that she has done wrong. Wrong from our point of view, that is. But she's much more than just an animal. She comes from a highly evolved planet. Technologically evolved, yes. But what about their social structure? Moral concepts, as we recognize them, maybe non existent in their society. They may be some sort of intellectual insect. Which feeds on human beings. Not ordinarily, no. They probably feed on the blood of some lower form of animal life on that planet, as we do on ours. No, not on blood. Oh, Alan, is there such a difference between blood and a rare beefsteak? All right. But what do we do? Take turns playing dinner for her? I don't think that will be necessary. We have a good supply of blood plasma with us. We'll use that to feed her. We found astronaut Paul Grant dead at zero zero hours this morning. Cause of death has been determined as loss of blood. How did it happen? I hope this won't sound too fantastic, Doctor. It's not very pleasant. The... The creature from the other planet, she fed on Paul. On his blood. How are you proceeding? The passenger is sleeping, not digesting. Apparently, she only feeds at intervals. We intend to give her blood plasma in the future. I see. You understand how important it is to keep her well and to bring her back with you safely? Commander Brockman has made this clear, Doctor. You will follow emergency plan 82 for the disposal of astronaut Grant's body? Yes, sir. That is our intention. Very well. A contact again in 24 hours. We will, Dr. Faraday. should not be shocked by anything we find out there. Gentlemen, the particular nature of our visitor from space for the moment does not go beyond this room. No, sir. sir. Bradley? Yes, sir. Notify next to kin that Paul Grant's death. This death in line of duty, cause or causes unknown. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. 
Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. For ye must know that God will redeem thy soul from the power of the grave. For he shall receive thee. Amen. Into the wastes of outer space. It's a fitting grave for an astronaut. Laura, will you check the automatic pilot for me? Yes, sir. Alan, I, uh, I need some exercise. Well, don't you think... Don't you think we ought to keep that... that thing tied up or something? I mean, when she wakes again, she's going to be dangerous. She'll only be dangerous when she's hungry, or if you're all asleep. So, we'll keep her fed, and one of us is going to stay awake at all times. You know, there's one thing that really bothers me. What's that? There wasn't any sign of a struggle. She must have attacked him in his sleep. What, do you mean that he wouldn't have felt it and wakened up? Not necessarily. People are often unaware of being attacked by a vampire bat while they're sleeping. Perhaps nature has given her a protective saliva that that is the pain of the victim. Then afterwards, because of the lack of blood, consciousness never returns. No, no, Albert, I don't think it is a mystery that there was no sign of a struggle. Alter like this. They must have had something similar to a fellow astronaut on her ship. Go ahead, try it. It's better than water. There, you see? She'll be well fed, you'll be safe, and we'll bring a healthy specimen home with us. And if we run out of plasma, Commander? But in that case, uh, we may have to take turns in uh, contributing to her well being. Oh, I know it sounds ghoulish, but is it really so different from having a patient aboard who needs frequent transfusions? She has been eating the plasma regularly and appears to be in good health. However, yesterday we ran out of supply, and from now on, it will be necessary. with human blood, digesting. Makes me sick even to look at her. I can't understand how Anders could have fallen asleep when he knew he that she... didn't fall asleep. I'm convinced of that now. 
And I don't think Paul did either. She does something, I don't know what. A kind of hypnosis. Some strange mental power that, that we don't have. I sensed it from the beginning. And it's deadly. Alan, I'm really afraid now for the first time. Well, don't be. We're going to get back to Earth, all right. And we're going to take our monster visitor with us. I only hope they know what to do with her. You are close enough now to retain Commander Brockman's body on board with you. Now, after you land, it might be instructive to perform an autopsy. Yes, Dr. Faraday. I trust you're taking the utmost precautions from now on. Absolutely, sir. Now, <clears throat> your best landing location will be the Earth. We're going to orbit for 24 hours and then receive final instructions. After the day, change your radio contact to the Space Institute frequency. I shall be leaving for Earth almost immediately. Is that clear? Yes, Dr. Faraday. We'll see you very soon. Good luck. You'll need it, sir. Things are going very badly on that ship, very badly indeed. She, she got to me, didn't she? Yes. What happened? 
I woke up, found her, pulled her off of you. We fought, and she just, she just ran away. I don't think I really hurt her. Where is she? Now, I better go look. Please don't. No, I'm all right now. Really, I'm all right. <laughs> What's happened to her? No, don't come any closer, Laura. She's dead. Now I know why she wouldn't let us take that blood sample. Why? She's bled to death. All you did was scratch her and she's bled to death. She's a hemophiliac. Perhaps she was some sort of royalty where she came from. A queen, maybe. I thought we weren't going to have enough fuel. We might get our sun goggles. We haven't seen sunlight for so long, we might be blinded by it. But it'll sure feel good. What is it? It's... it's some kind of egg. Egg? they sent her. She wasn't just an ambassador. She was a queen. A queen bee. Maybe this is how their society is set up. A queen who does all the breeding. Or maybe their planet was dying and they just sent her to bring her kind to Earth. Laura, we have to destroy it. But Alan. But don't you realize what they were trying to do? They, they sent her to Earth to find a new feeding ground for her race. To them, we're just animals to be eaten. We can't let these creatures breed on Earth. Alan, that's not for us to decide. Scientists from all over the world have been waiting for us to bring back something living. And they'll keep them under control. Too late. Just as I thought, she has them hidden all over the ship. They'll have to tear this ship apart piece by piece and fumigate it. Wonderful, where are they? Alive and growing, you say? Extraordinary. I don't think you realize, Doctor. They should be destroyed immediately. Come, come, my boy. You've just returned from an amazing but a very tiring trip. We may destroy them and we may not. 
but at least we must see what we have. Isn't that right, Laura? I, I think so, Doctor. You brought back something unique and marvelous from another world. You can be very proud. But, Doctor, they're deadly. I appreciate your warning, my boy. We shall take every precaution. Help me, will you, gentlemen? We have some very precious samples to remove from this ship. Well, I tried. Do scientists, Alan. They know what they're doing. I hope so. Come on. Let's touch Earth and feel sunshine on our faces again. <laughs> 